What's up guys and welcome to this video about different navigation methods in SwiftUI. In this video I will show you on the one hand the default navigation components in SwiftUI like navigation link inside the navigation view and on the other hand I will also show you how you can set up a customized navigation environment which makes it really flexible to navigate in your whole application. And I will also show you some cool tricks when it comes to navigation with the default components. For example, you want to trigger an initial action when you navigate with your navigation link to another view, but this is not possible right now. But we can also make a little customized solution for that so that this will become really easy. All right, first we will have a look at navigation link. Using a navigation link is really straightforward. We just need to put it inside a navigation view like this. And inside this navigation view, we can then define the navigation link to make it work. Otherwise, we couldn't click on it. So we will say navigation link. And for the destination, we can pass a view and for the label also. And this view can be a simple text or also a complex view, which has other nested views inside. So in here, we will just say destination. And for the label, we simply say click me, for example. And then uh, this navigation link works. And if we click on this navigation link, then we get forwarded to another screen. And the screen holds our defined destination here. So this is simple so far. And it's also really cool that we get this default back button on the top left corner. And when we click on it, then uh, we get to the previous screen and we can click on the navigation link and get to the destination again. So this works all pretty well. But the first challenge now is how can we navigate back programmatically? For that, we can make use of an environment variable. And to show you this, we will define another view. So this will be an example view, which conforms to the view protocol. And for that, it needs to have this body here, which returns some view. And here we will have our text now with the this destination and then we can simply say on the destination of our navigation link example view and invoke it like this and in here we can then define our environment variable and since this presentation mode will be deprecated in the future we can now use uh, this dismiss for dismissing a view so we will say while dismiss and in here, I will remove this uh, text again, the destination text and add a button with an action and a label. And for the action, we simply invoke this dismiss operator. So uh, this here. And for the text, we will say dismiss view. And then we can have a look at the preview. And when we click on this dismiss view, we can navigate back. So this is really simple and can be applied if you want to dismiss the view, if the user presses a button, for example, and then you want to show the progress of this button action in your previous view or some kind of other use case. The next challenge is triggering an action when you click on a navigation link, because uh, when you write something like this, print action, then you will see that this navigation link does not conform to view anymore because it uses a view builder under the hood and the view builder just takes views in uh, this uh, lambda block here. So we can't execute an action inside this navigation link lambda. So where should we put our action? By default, this is not possible. We can uh, do something like this on up here and perform some action in here. So print uh, action. Then this action will always be triggered when this example view appears. Sometimes this is the desired behavior, but this is also not a good practice if you just want to invoke some initial action. Because if you navigate from this example view to another view and then back to the example view, then this action gets triggered again. I will quickly demonstrate you this in a little example. In our example view, we will uh, remove this button and say navigation link and the destination will be a simple text. Next destination and the label will be also text navigate again. Then we can launch this. And when I click on this navigation link, click me, then you will see that the action gets executed because our example view gets visible to the user and on appear is called. And when I click on navigate again and go back, then you will see that this action gets performed again. 
And this is sometimes not a desired behavior because sometimes you only want to do some initial loading from the network or from the database and you don't want that this gets executed again if you press the back button. So how can we avoid this? We can write a custom component which still uses the navigation link. So you will still have the back button on the top left corner and also the animation with this back button and all that stuff. But you can also execute an action, an initial one, which only gets triggered if you actually navigate to the screen, if you actually click on the navigation link. To achieve this, we can kind of create a navigation link on steroids. So we will say struct navigation button, which also takes a destination, which needs to conform to view and the label, which also needs to conform to view. The same thing we have in our for our navigation link. And this will return a view, of course. And then we have uh, three different variables. So we have an action. This is the additional part here, which uh, does not return anything and is empty by default. So we don't need to pass an action. This is optional here. Then we also have a destination which returns this destination, uh, this one here, and we have a var label, which returns our label, this here. And then we have also a state, private var is active, which is false by default. And we of course need to change this from unit to void. Uh, this was Kotlin mistake here from Android. <laughs> and then we have a body, some view, and we invoke our button, which has an action and a label. And for the action, we first invoke our action. So our action gets performed. And then we also toggle our is active state var so that this false becomes true. And for our label, we can then pass ourself.label. Below that, we will define our navigation link. And this time we use this one, this destination is active and label because we need this is active uh, boolean binding, which comes from our state var up here. And you can see that this will be deprecated in iOS 16. I won't do any iOS checks here because then the code would get too large, but I will show you the al alternative to this one, uh, which you can then use in your own projects. But for now we will uh, first use this uh, deprecated one, so self.destination, we will invoke this destination in here. For the binding, we will pass our self.isActive and for the label, we don't need a label here, so we can just pass an empty view. And for iOS 16, you should uh, use this one, navigation link with the value and the label. And then uh, you can say um, navigation destination, and here you get a is presented binding bool where you can pass this private var is active state and you can also invoke the destination. Now we can make use of our navigation button. For this navigation link, we don't want to perform an initial action, but for this one here. So we will change this to navigation button. And then we need another closure here. And we call this one here destination. Like, not like this. So like this. And we remove this on up here. And up here we can then print uh, action for our action. And then we can try this out. As you can see, our navigation link looks the same and is still clickable. So let me click on it. And also our initial action works very well since in the console action gets printed. Let me also show you that our problem with the back navigation is also solved. So click on navigation again and go back. And as you can see, the action really gets performed once. All right, this is it for navigation link. And now we will come to sheets. Sheets are a neat approach if you want to give the user the feeling of control that he's still on the same view, but he should also see some kind of additional view where he can, for example, do some updates when he clicks on a person item. Showing a sheet is really simple. We just need a state var, which we can then pass as a binding to our sheet modifier. So we will say state var is sheet shown is equal to false by default. And then we can create a button with an action in the label and the action just toggles this is sheet 
shown state var and the label will be a simple text with show sheet. And then for our sheet, we don't need a navigation view. We can apply this sheet on every view. So we can here say for our VStack sheet and the is presented binding comes from our is sheet shown. And for the content, we can then again pass some simple views like a text view or also a nested view. We will create a little example view, which is a struct example view, which conforms to view. Therefore, we have a var body which returns some view and here we say sheet view and then we can pass this or invoke this example view inside our she closure here and in the preview we can now uh, test this we click on show sheet and then you can see the sheet appears and we can also dismiss this sheet with uh, dragging it down but we can also dismiss this sheet programmatically. And to achieve this, we somehow need to set this is sheet shown to false. But since we don't have access to this is sheet shown state var inside our example view, we somehow need to um, uh, pass this to this example view. And we can achieve this by defining a lambda function. So we say let on dismiss, um, uh, which returns nothing and also takes nothing. And in here, we can then uh, define a button, for example, because somehow we need to trigger the on dismiss function. And this button simply calls on dismiss, and the label will be dismiss sheet, like this. And here, where we invoke our example view, we can then uh, invoke it like this and define our on dismiss function. And in here, we will say is sheet shown dot wrapped value because we don't want to change the binding we want to change the wrapped value so the actual boolean value so this will be set to false and then we can test this in our preview so let's click on dismiss sheet and as you can see we can also dismiss it like this all right this is it for the sheet it's really simple to open a sheet and also to dismiss it programmatically or by dragging it down and now we will have a look at custom navigation. So we will define a custom navigation view model, which allows us to navigate really flexible and we can exceed the limitations of navigation link or sheets, for example, because it's very difficult to navigate two or three steps back at once or navigate to a whole other point in our application. With navigation links, this can be very difficult. And with our customized solution, a custom navigation view model, which holds our navigation state, and depending on the state we pass to this view model, we can then navigate really flexible. So things will get wild now. First of all, we need to define our navigation state view model. So create a new file, navigation state view model. This will be a class, navigation state view model which is an observable object. And in here we have a published var current view. And this current view needs an initial value. So our initial screen to define our different views and to differentiate between them, we can use an enum class. So enum different views. And the first view will be our home view. Second view will be, for example, a person view. And then we have the third view will be an example view like this. And then we need to define the initial view. This will be different views dot uh, home view like this. And we also need a function inside this class. Fun on uh, view changed new view of type different views. And then we say self dot current view is equal to new view. And then we can observe this current view and depending on the current view, we can then invoke the current view, which the user wants to see. Then let's go to our main struct here, our app structure, and define a state object of type navigation state view model. Navigation state view model. And then we can pass this view model as an environment object so we can get access to this view model everywhere in our application and can uh, invoke this navigation state view models new view or uh, on view changed function which we defined so environment object and then uh, we pass our navigation state view model 
And then we can go to our content view, which we can rename. So we will call this navigation. And also this will be our navigation view here. And for the preview, we also need to change the name like this. And now we can create our three different views. So we will have a struct home view, which conforms to view. And I will just make simple views here and we will do a little bit of uh, custom navigation. But uh, I think the concept behind it should get clear. So this will be var body, which returns some view. And we will have home view here. And let me quickly copy and paste this. Uh, two times. Here we have person view and here we have example view and let's also rename the text like this and then we can remove this sheet stuff here and get access to our environment object. For that we can simply say add environment object var which is our navigation state view model of type navigation state view model. And in this body now we can check on the navigation states view model current state. So we will do this with a switch. So switch navigation state view model dot current view. In case it's our home view, then we will invoke our home view. In case it's the person view, we will invoke the person view. And the same thing for our example view. And then we can try this out. We still get an error. Ah, okay. Uh, we need to change this, of course, to navigation view like this. And then we can try this out just to look if our home view is shown because in our navigation state view model, the home view is our initial view. And let's start the application. As you can see, this works fine. So the initial view, our home view is shown. Now let's do some navigation logic. In our navigation file, we then need access to our environment object in our home view as well to navigate to another view. We can uh, just copy and paste it like this. In this home view, we will have a vStack, for example, just simple UI stuff here. And we will put this text inside here and also a button. And for the button, we will have an action and a label. So the text will be navigate to person view, for example. And then here we can say navigation state view model dot on view changed. Maybe this name is not the best one. We should maybe call it on view change. Let's uh, rename this quickly like this. And our new view will be our person view. This is simply it. Now we can invoke our person view by calling this on view change function when we click on this button. Let's try this out. And when we click now on navigate to person view, then you can see we navigated to the person view. And you have maybe also noticed that we don't have a nice animation here. Of course, because this is a custom solution, you need to add some kind of navigation animation if you want that. And we also, oops, we also don't have this back button on the top left corner because, yeah, again, it's a custom solution and you would need to take care of this on your own. But now you are highly flexible. When we go to our person view and, for example, define another button, an action, and we also need the environment object here, and we will navigate, for example, to the example view. So we say navigation state view model on view change to example view, and here we say navigate to example view, and in our example view, we then don't want to uh, go back one step. We want to go back two steps again. So we will say uh, on back, for example. And then we just say on view change. Our new view will be our home view. And we also need to pass this environment object uh, logic here. And let me quickly demonstrate you this. Now let's click on navigate to person view. Then we are in the person view. Then we can navigate to the example view. And when we click on, on back, then we are at the home view again. So as you can see, this is just really simple UI logic here and uh, not the best examples I know, but I need to take care of the time. But now you have a powerful solution and I think the basics are clear. With them, you can use this and expand this to your own needs and you will become very flexible 
navigating in your UI. Of course, you can also use this custom solution together with the Swift UI default navigation components. In my own projects, I don't use this custom solution every time. I only use it when I come to the limitations of navigation links and sheets. And then it's really cool to have a combination of both of them. But I won't suggest you to only use the custom solution if you have some kind of uh, simple UI navigation logic. All right, okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can also apply this approach in your own project and it really helps you. If you have a question, uh, for example, about expanding this approach to more complex uh, navigation logic, then feel free to write me a message or write a comment.